Are you sure you must have this one? Please, how about this toy instead? I'm told it's very popular amongst the young children. Or perhaps this one? <sighs> As you wish. But a warning! It is cursed. It was given to me many moons ago by a traveler, and has brought only pain and suffering. If you must have it, just be sure that no one who has a birthday is near it. 24 hours before or after. Heed my warning! Welcome back. Today I bring you SCP-983, The Birthday Monkey. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my Patreon. Happy birthday, son! I know it's a little early, but there was no way I was going to be able to hide these from you all night, right? The boy nodded excitedly. Now, don't rush through it. Be sure to read the cards and write down who gave you what, okay? There are gifts here from us, your grandparents, Bobby next door, and even Nanny Joyce. The father set the toys down, in front of the gleeful boy. Happy birthday, buddy. The boy smiled back as he tried to decide which present to open first. The boy looked at the assortment of gifts before him. Outside his door, Nanny Joyce walked past. Now you behave yourself, you hear? The boy frowned and nodded back slowly. He turned his attention back to the gifts before him. So much to choose from. Where to start? A ring ding ding, it's your birthday. How ring, cute, ding, he thought to himself. It was a little old fashioned and vintage for his likes, but it sounded ring, amazing ding, nonetheless. The parents stood by the countertop, talking and drinking. Their son was growing up to be quite the thoughtful and kind little man. The past few years had been trying. Job terminations, a miscarriage, and moving to a new city had all taken their toll. And now, with a new baby on the way, they felt somewhat divided. You know, you really shouldn't be drinking. Think about the baby. She hmm. scoffed and looked away. He hoped the new child would turn things around for them. Despite their marriage difficulties, Nanny Joyce had been a blessing. God knows she already helped out so much, and with a new baby on the way, she'd be needed more than ever. They all looked up, startled. The sound had come from upstairs. They rushed towards the bedroom, dreading what could have happened. They threw the bedroom door open. All that remained of their son was a skeleton. Oh dear God! Birthday! Get me up to speed, Doc. What do we got? I've only got the bare bones on this one. But it was enough for the higher-ups to send us out. A kid turned into a skeleton. Any witnesses? He was in his bedroom alone when it happened. Seemed he had only been alone for a few minutes. Last person to see him alive? The father. How long ago did this go down? About two hours ago. That's really all we have to go on. Y'all ready to investigate, Watson? Who? Watson, Sherlock Holmes' assistant? Did you just call me your assistant? No, I, I mean, yes, but there was more about being Sherlock... Whatever, never mind. The parents sat on the couch, the father clearly distraught. The mother sipped her glass of wine, seemingly either drunk or numb to the situation. Behind them stood the nanny, her eyes red from crying. I'm terribly sorry for your loss. If it's all right, I'd like to ask you some questions. Yes, yes, of course. I understand that you were the last person to see your son alive. Yes. Can you think of any reason someone would try to kill your son? No, of course not. He was just a child. He was very sweet and kind to everyone who knew him. I understand. Had there been any changes in his personality lately? I No, not really. Uh, perhaps a little more withdrawn as of late. We've only recently moved here, but he's always been a bit shy. I see. Any other changes in his or your life? Well, I lost my job shortly before we moved. We had a miscarriage about a month ago, so Nanny Joyce has been helping out more than before. 
We also just found out we're pregnant again, but we hadn't had a chance to even tell him yet. I see. Huh. What about strangers? Did he speak of anyone or come home with anything obscure? Um, no. No, I don't think so. What do you mean, obscure things? Items, um, out of the ordinary type things, like gifts? Oh, well, it was his birthday today. He had a bunch of new toys. His birthday? Where are these new toys? In his bedroom. Okay. Uh, Please stay here while we have a look. They stepped into the bedroom. The skeleton sat behind the toys, as if guarding them. Kloss looked over the various objects and items. Anything look odd to you? Nothing too weird, but that monkey does kind of stick out. Right? It looks old. It doesn't fit in with anything else in here. What's that? Chen pointed towards the black candy on the floor. Don't touch it. Let's pack it up and take it back with us. They came back into the living room. We've taken some items from your son's room to investigate, as well as the body. It won't take long, so these men will keep you safe while we get to the bottom of this. I'll have to ask you to remain here until we return. The father nodded his head. Kloss looked over the boy's skeleton, the other items they had taken from the house besides it. Any clues? Not really, but perhaps a lead. The skeleton is, well, a skeleton. The toys haven't done anything strange, and there's that odd black candy. Anything weird about it? Well, that's just it. It's not testing for anything. Like like it's not made of anything. Anomalous. Yeah, but what does it do? Mm, probably turns you into a skeleton? Perhaps. Only one way to find out. The door opened. A D-Class stood behind it. Well, that confirms it, Sherlock. Elementary, my dear Watson. I'm thinking that candy came from the monkey? It was near it, and it didn't fit with the rest of the toys. That's probably our SCP. Case closed, Dr. Holmes. Not quite, Dr. Watson. We still don't know who done it. Chen and Claus stood before the parents and their nanny once again. Have you found anything? We have some ideas. Ideas? Really? Is that it? You can't just keep us locked up here, you know. These poor people need space to grieve. And so do I. We'll have this wrapped up in a moment. Please have a seat. Do you know where this candy came from? I think I saw it fall out of the monkey's bell when we found the skeleton. Kloss turned to Chen. Plan A? Plan A, Watson. Chen pulled a small, transparent bag from his pocket. Does this look familiar? Looks like the candy's in the bedroom. Correct! If you all wouldn't mind indulging us for a moment, we'd like you all to try one. What for? Please, it'll only further the investigation. This is ridiculous. Nonetheless, if you would, please. Chen passed out the candies to the parents and the nanny. They each looked at the candy before them and around the room. It was an odd request, but what harm could it possibly do? The father went first, placing the candy in his mouth. His wife took another sip of her glass and without any reluctance tossed the candy into her mouth. Floss and Chen eyed them, looking for a reaction. Now you please, Joyce. Ridiculous. Fine. She popped the candy into her mouth and chewed. She spat it out on the floor. Take her. That's your son's killer. Nanny Joyce, you're mistaken. She would never. Oh, indeed I would. Look at yourselves. Hopeless. She's a drunk. You're unemployed. And now what? You want to add another child to this? Oh, sure. Nanny Joyce will just pick up the slack. If you weren't going to be responsible for this mess, then I sure as hell was. Take her away. I I can't believe it. I'm very sorry for your loss. Amnestics! These guys are going to give you a little shot just to calm your nerves. Another anomaly off the streets and into containment. Quite an odd one. When you have eliminated all the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. 
my dear Watson. SCP-983 is a vintage mechanical monkey with a faded date located on the bottom of the left foot, placing its manufacture at some point in the 1940s by an unknown person or company. The monkey is dressed in the remains of what used to be a popular vest design for circus ringmasters. In the monkey's left hand, there is a lightly tarnished brass bell. In the right hand, the monkey holds a small brass striking rod. The monkey is capable of emitting speech and sound, although examination of the objects has revealed no seams, screws, or openings that would indicate a method of disassembly. 983 is completely harmless and inert under most circumstances, and may be handled without special precautions so long as the handler is not experiencing the 24-hour period considered the anniversary of their birth. Once 983 physically comes into contact with an individual on their birthday, it will spring to life and do a single backflip before raising its bell and singing a simple song. A ring ding ding, it's your birthday! 983 will sing this song once every 3 to 4 seconds, pausing only to ring its bell until the new owner has died or met the sing-along requirements. Each verse sung by 983 appears to age the owner of the item by what is estimated at one year. By singing along with 983, the owner may deactivate the monkey witch who will ring its bell once and produce a single gumdrop style candy from the bell. Test groups instructed to follow document 135R to the letter have verified that a perfect sing-along results in the production of crystal clear candy with mildly luminescent qualities. A near-perfect sing-along produces the same candy minus the luminescence. Both of these candy types have been verified as restoring any age lost by the consumer due to 983 song. However, the luminescent candy may also grant additional time and youth. Under absolutely no circumstances are black candies allowed to be consumed. Never underestimate what people are capable of. Trust must be earned, but with it comes vigilance. As always, have a care and remember to subscribe, like, and share, if you would. Until next time, farewell.